What's up, Leafs fans? Welcome to Leafs Digest. Goody and I are back breaking down game three of the regular season. The Toronto Maple Leafs beat the Ottawa Senators 3-1 to in this one. Goals from Wayne Simmons, Alex Kerfoot, and Michael Bunting taking down the Ottawa Senators. Jack Campbell, 20 saves in net tonight. One goal against a 9-5-2 save percentage. Just a happy feeling all around, Goody. We even saw a situation where the Toronto Maple Leafs had to go out and sign a guy from the University of Toronto to sit on the bench behind Jack Campbell tonight in an un- unusual circumstance, but uh, they get the job done. He doesn't have to go in net. So also, if you're looking for the explanation on that one as to why the Leafs had to do it, I posted a video earlier in the day before this game, so make sure you go and check that one out. I just broke down why the Leafs had to go out and sign Alex Bishop, what it meant for the team, and how they kind of circumvented cap issues there and what it means for Monday's game going forward but we're not talking about that anymore we're talking about tonight's game Goody how did you feel about this one um it's nice to be winning close low scoring games mm. uh it's that's pretty unconventional for the Leafs the Leafs always score <laughs> their not way very out of trouble like <laughs> no not at all but it's all right that we're breaking away from Leaf like uh, the only thing that worries me is the teams we've faced so far really in the greater scheme of things aren't going to be our greatest competition. Right. So to play them in close games where we're struggling to score, they're struggling to score. I guess you could take away the defensive benefit of it all. And Jack Campbell's been amazing. But uh, yeah, you'd like to see more offense there. But either way, I'm happy with the two points tonight. Our first line's not getting it done, but at least the depth is clicking. I think Austin Matthews will come back in and elevate our top talent. But in the meantime, it's great to see guys doing their role and getting the job done. Yeah, and you talk about like the top line not performing, and I think you're bang on with that, and that top line has been Marner, Tavares, Richie thus far through these first three games, but one guy who's in that top six who's going to be, I think one guy that we touch on all year this year, we just constantly bring up, is going to be William Nylander, who has three points through his first three games at the Leafs this season. Um He's played incredible. Like, I have been so happy with what William Nylander's done. He just gets an assist tonight, but he's creating chances. He's getting shots on goal. Like, this guy is, he, again, continues to look like an an incredibly improved player from seasons past, and he looks like he's just taken what he did in the playoffs last year and realized, like, okay, this is what I have to do all the time. This is the player I have to be, not just in the playoffs. And it's just, like, he continues to take that step. I even just look at that bunting goal, or curve a goal tonight sorry and it starts with bunting on the four check this guy is just hard on pucks he's he as you said like you hit it right on the head this guy is a little bit of a weasel like he gets in plays he gets in guys faces finishes his checks he's hard on the four check creates this chance for Kerfoot's goal because he's hard on the guy on the boards forces the puck down low and then Nylander I feel like in years past is just grabbing that puck kind of not looking maybe panicking or maybe holding on to the puck for too long and then turning it over either way. Whereas tonight you see him, he like grabs that puck, takes a quick look, makes a smart move, and then makes a pass out front to Kerfoot, tape to tape. Kerfoot scores the goal. Like it's just all around those guys. At least I'm happy with Nylander and Bunting playing together as well because I think that's going to be a combination we see going forward no matter who their center is. Yeah, starting to look like Bunting belongs in that top six. And the nice thing too talked about it before but he's going to do other things to elevate his stock we already know he has a nose for the net pretty skilled uh he's got great numbers for the small sample size he has so who (laughs) knows really how good he is uh but in the meantime while he's convincing us he's going to go out there and be a rat and do that part of the game so that's awesome and william nylander what a player i mean i would knew he's been so dominant compared to i wouldn't say he's already shown flashes of greatness in his early career but i feel like Right now, we're starting to get to a consistent basis with him. And so tonight, I know we talk about gambling a little bit on the channel. So I hit 3.5 shots on net for Willie. (laughs) Took that over. (laughs) Yeah. And there you go, man. I put the whole account on that. I was just so confident that that was the the winning move of the game. William Nylander is going to go out there and he's going to have another game. And he he did. Picked up the assist. Uh, What what was the total shots on net for him? Four? Or is it five? I'm pulling it up right now just to... uh confirm something like that four shots on goal to finish so that means he has 15 shots on goal through his first three games of the Leafs this season like as long as his number sticks around those like just a little bit of a gambling insight but like as long as his number sticks around that like two and a half three and a half I'd feel pretty comfortable putting the over honestly Nylander Nylander doing that especially with a guy like Matthews out of the lineup yeah that was my logic on it too is maybe we'll get a different look when Matthews comes in but when Matthews Mm -hmm. isn't there does seem like Willie's now the next up, which is definitely a uh, 
a bit of a change of thinking from, you know, the way we've looked at Marner in past years. I just think that when it comes to getting a goal and really being the most dominant player on the ice, maybe that's William Nylander's spot right now. Cause I think Marner is obviously so skilled in his own right, but in terms of playmaking balanced with goal scoring, yeah, William Nylander is the next best thing to Austin Matthews on the Maple Leafs. Yeah, and as far as it goes right now, William Nylander is on the road to a point per game for this season. And speaking of on the road to things, Josh and I are on the road to 1,000 subscribers as we roll along right now on this channel. So we appreciate every subscriber along the way. If you have not subscribed to this channel yet, make sure you do that right now. And if you're not the type of person who wants to subscribe and click the link in whichever corner, I couldn't remember which corner it was last time, above Josh's head, above my head, wherever it is, Click that subscribe now button right now, but if you don't want to do it right now, wait till the end of the video, and after you like and comment on this video, make sure you subscribe before you close this one out, but we appreciate all the subscribers along the way. Now, one guy who did get a chance into the lineup tonight, kind of based on the circumstances that I had mentioned before in the last video when I talked about Alex Bishop getting signed to this, is Timothy Lilligren gets a chance to step up here because... Justin Hall goes out with injury, and it doesn't allow the Leafs much room to move guys around. Timothy Lilligram becomes relied upon to step into this lineup, and I felt he played great tonight. I was pretty happy with him. There was a few glaring mistakes here and there, but it wasn't anything to be like, oh my god, like get this guy off the ice or anything along those lines. It was more of just like, okay, yeah, that's an, that's a mistake. Let's learn from it move on. But otherwise, I was pretty happy with his game. Yeah, well, picks up the assist later on in the game there, but... um. Yeah, considering where he is on the amount of leash he's been given at the NHL level, I understand that glaring mistakes will happen. Yeah, I almost tended to feel like, uh, yeah, I felt like Dermott probably had a better game than them tonight. I think overall the defense did play pretty well. Uh, we limited them to a pretty low amount of shots for there for the Canadians. They only score one, and even that one looked offside. Uh, moving past that, though, I feel like Lilligren to me looked solid, but. Really what's selling it right now is that he's younger than Dermot. I think that Dermot is probably just as good as him right now. And tonight it showed. Like, I think Dermot really had a great game too. Uh, he had one incredible defensive play in late in the third period when Ennis was trying yeah. to go around him. He does the diving play, stick, swing back behind his back. Like, And you know what? Honestly, it was an incredible play, and I'm not going to take that away from him. But you know mm-hmm. who on the Leafs 110% taught him that? It's TJ Brody. When you watch TJ Brody on two-on-ones, it is like... It is a pattern in that guy's game of something that that's he true. does on the two on one. So, but that's also just a sign of like, hey, these defense they're talking, they're learning from each other, they're trying to get better. So it's <clears> kind of <throat> nice to see from that from that standpoint. Yeah. But it was oh, a great yeah. defensive play. It was um, another yeah, defenseman and- who I think played really well tonight. And honestly, Goody, I want to give this one my power play, my poppy power play of the game. It's going to be Wayne Simmons' goal, the pass from Rasmus Sandin. Now, that is that right there was a poised, confident pass and play by that defenseman all around. Sandin having the wherewithal to slide down off the faceoff to get into a better position, kind of asserting himself in like an umbrella position along the half wall, but staying in motion as Dermot came across the ice off the one faceoff, dishing it down to Sanin, and then Sanin, rather than like just ripping one in front or holding on to it for too long and having a circle behind the net, gets himself into position to make a good tape-to-tape pass out front, but on top of that and above all of that, makes the perfect pinpoint perfect pass through the defenseman's legs right to Wayne Simmons Wayne Simmons stick he didn't even have to move his stick to tap that one into the net it's just a beautiful play all around a great play by Rasmus Sanin and just this guy continues to show steps where he's taking it to another level to become a better NHL defenseman every single night every time he steps on the ice so that is my poppy power play of the day yeah, no, you can't deny anything about Sandine. I mean, smoothness is the name of the game with him. He is smooth with everything he does and confident. And we can we can work with that, right? You know, the smooth skater, smooth puck handler, and he'll he'll slow down plays and set guys up like that. And also credit to Simmons too. I I think that Simmons is like a widely underrated asset in Toronto, even though he's down there playing on our fourth line now. That fourth line My looked pop- great. That fourth line looked great. I know great. it did. And yeah, and that's because you can have guys like Wayne Simmons playing yeah. there who I think 
when you consider the physical edge he brings, there's still so much skill left there that kind of flies under the radar. But I'm pretty comfortable with Wayne Simmons in a variety of situations, which says a lot when he's playing on your fourth line. But age will be what it is, and he's a veteran player now. So fitting in where he needs to be on the roster. My poppy power play of the day, man, I got to go with Michael Bunting. Doing that in front of the home crowd for your first rip of the season, pretty awesome, pretty awesome. That was a great feeling. It was a nice goal. And, I mean, he's just doing all the right things right now to prove himself to his teammates, to the staff, really just get in the great, like, the the good books of the fans, too. I I love that it happened at home. That was definitely a sweetener of this whole thing. But a great goal by Bunting. We know he's got a nose for the net. And that one's going to feel way better than any preseason goals that he scored at all. Like that preseason oh, yeah. goal, the hat trick, that's obviously going to feel pretty good. But again, like you go out there tonight, you score a goal on home ice against the Ottawa Senators as an insurance goal and a pretty nice goal at that. Like a smart play, good hands to be able to stop up, kind of turn back around, hold on to it, and then just a good shot to finish it off. It started on his own end too. Yeah, exactly. Like it's just a good play all around from this guy who's showing that he is an all-around hockey player. And, like, the one thing I keep, like, thinking when I look at him and watch him play is that this guy may not be one of those players that is like, oh, my God, this guy scores so many goals. Or, wow, he's so great defensively. But he's just a really good NHL player. Right? Like, you just yeah, in general, you're just like, yeah, you know what? Like, I don't ever look at, I mean, three games. and But it's, it's like, a little early. But we did see it in the preseason as well. And it's just you don't really look at him and, like, question him being on the ice. They could put him out on the power play if he had to slide into power play one. And I'd be like, yeah, okay. Like, I think he can make it work. Whereas, like, I see someone like um, Mikheyev go on the first power play unit. And I'm just kind of scratching my head a little bit. Like, ah. Whereas, I still do think Mikheyev is a good player. He just doesn't bring the goal scoring. It's just like, when you see Michael Bunting, like, I feel like you just get that general feeling of, of, like, confidence in him. That this guy is an NHL player and he can do it at this level. 100% and I just there's so many sweeteners with bunting like I don't want to get to the point where I look at him as something more than just you know an on ice asset but he is playing extra hard I feel like for Toronto you can tell that he's just stepping up the game in so many different ways and he's skilled he's skilled the numbers will tell you and right now it's it's translating for the Leafs which is exactly what you need when you lose a guy like Zach Hyman who you know goes in the corners like bunting does and then converts like bunting does long road to be given a Zach Hyman comparison because in Toronto that's a pretty <laughs> high comparison to be given yeah but um but you know what he and others are making this a pretty suitable by committee replacement uh but but Nick Ritchie let's bring him up briefly I know you had a bet on him to score tonight I think we were all hoping that hoping that was going to happen I did have bunting uh, anytime goal score though I only had three bets tonight I had the yeah. Nylander shots on goal over the bunting uh anytime goal score and Ritchie anytime goal score so I had two for three at least so we're overall winning right now, but but Nick Ritchie, I feel like this is one of those situations where it comes from the Bruins, right? This team has lived off the reputation of fighting, scoring, hitting, right? Like they do that kind of whatever it takes to win hockey. And they got a bunch of guys who sort of embody that. And so if you're going to let a young player who's like, what, 26, Nick Ritchie, walk off your team when he didn't really demand that outrageous of a contract, I feel like there's something too good to be true. Like, what's the catch? Like, why didn't the Bruins give him this? It's also his third NHL team that he's on, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. There seems to be some reasonable step backs from the idea of Nick Ritchie to the reality of Nick Ritchie. I think the Um, biggest thing for him is consistency. Really? Definitely. Definitely. But sometimes it seems like that, you know, I could get a guy like maybe Makaya where he's snake bitten, even though he's trying. Whereas Nick Ritchie, sometimes it looks like he doesn't believe in himself to get to a puck first. So he just kind of does some like corny bailout move where he'll throw like a a stick to someone's back or just kind of give up on it. I don't know. Nick Ritchie, I feel like needs to be doing a bit more if he has any hope of staying in the top six. Here. Yeah, I I agree with you on that. But uh, here's my thing is that I think Nick Ritchie at I think his stat is what is he six foot three? He's like 6'3 or something, 220 pounds. Let's just say a ballpark yeah. number. He's probably a little heavier than that even. So, yeah, but like when when certain guys go missing or they go invisible in games, you kind of sit there and you're like, oh, I didn't notice him tonight. A Nick Ritchie invisible at 6'2", 6'3", 220 pounds is very noticeable because that's a big body playing in your upper lineup 
who goes invisible and like it it becomes a noticeable invisible if that makes sense he's not doing yeah. anything productive but you're noticing him not do things productively like he's not being a detriment to this team by any means i wouldn't say like he's not causing goals against or causing bad chances but you're looking at him out there and it's just like especially it's it's pretty glaring in the offensive zone when you're saying those things like the things you're saying where he's like just not winning a battle or not getting to pucks and things it just becomes very obvious of like this guy's not doing stuff i think it's a little early in season to jump on it and be like this is the player yeah. that he is and i also think part of this which again it happened in the playoffs last year and which was a huge story is like uh matthews and marner they go missing well what have we seen so far from tonight is or from these first three games is Tavares and Marner haven't really done anything. And Nick Ritchie's not a guy to drive a line. So if if they're not going, it's a little bit harder for him to get going as well. Yeah, that makes sense. I just, I feel like um, the effort level just visibly, right? Like it's down. Johnny T is always working hard. I, th- I still think even though Marner's not getting the points, he's in there creating opportunities. I just find Nick Ritchie's the only guy on that line right now who looks like he's just genuinely beat. And um and that won't last. That won't last. I know he'll have his games, but it's an issue of consistency. So mm-hmm. if he wants to stay there long term or play a big role into the playoffs, like it's got to elevate from here. And I know it's a small sample size. The reason I'm kind of blowing it up at the moment is because, you know, I'm, what is the catch on this guy? Right. Like it, it does the idea of him. Is he too, good to, be too good to be true? Yeah, exactly. And, and remember at one point, too, we talked about this before in the pod, but we came pretty close to taking him over William Nylander. So. Willie went eighth overall, and then I think Richie went tenth uh, to the Ducks. But but yeah, that season I remember all the projections, all the pros were saying that we were going to go take Nick Richie. We went the skill route, or I guess the very clear cut skill route, and took Willie. But yeah, he, uh, Nick Richie's supposed to be a player. I don't know what's happened in his career where it just seems like the effort or consistency isn't there. But I'm hoping the Leafs can get it out of him eventually. We're giving him a gift in that first line spot. All right, Getty. Well, the last thing I want to do breaking down this game is get to our Babcock grades of the game. So do you want to start us off here for our uh, for our grades of the game? You got a grade for tonight? Yeah, sure. You know what? I'll go with uh, A-. minus. I feel like we might be close in that grade range again. We always seem to be. Uh, I'm not sure what you're going with, but A- minus for me, and it's because Jack Campbell played great. Um You know, you got depth scoring. Obviously, you won the game, but your first line still underperforming. And, um, you know, when these teams are, you get beat by the Senators, who I just feel like really don't belong in the same conversation as us. I think the Sens are like a really hardworking team with some young talent, but you're trying to win a Stanley Cup, right? Let's not hang around with them too long. Another close game after getting beat by them, you'd think you'd blow the hinges off them at home. Didn't really go down that way. I'd still say it was like dominating in some senses, but you know, an A minus is where I'm settling because it didn't blow me away. Like, okay, the Leafs are back, but we won the game and it was pretty sound. First line struggles are what they are, but that's the grade I feel pretty comfortable with all factors considered. What about you? I'm going to go a little bit further away from you than what the grade you put out there is. I'm going with a B, just a flat B. I think this is a pretty like mediocre game all around. I think... In some senses, it was good in terms of, yeah, it's a good bounce back game. We just lost to the Senators, which we shouldn't have lost that game. We played terribly to start the game, end up with 48 shots. But you look at tonight, we only put up 26 shots, which, yeah, you're not going to put up 48 every single night. I get it, and I'm not sitting here saying we are. But you only put up 26 in a night where you should have been kind of coming back and just being all over them right away for the entire duration of the game. And then some of that even just leads into what happened in the second period. We jump out to a 2 nothing lead early. Great. We have an incredible first period, and I'm happy to see that. Second period comes. We let in one goal. We're, down, or we're up 2-1 now. And then it kind of goes to the point of like, Ottawa starts taking it to us. And if you're a really, really good team, if your team is going to compete for a Stanley Cup, when you're playing teams like the Ottawa Senators, you have to limit that that storm that comes. You have to weather that storm yeah. when it does come. Because teams like Tampa, who go on to win, when that when that comes, they often suppress it. So it comes for a little bit of time, and then they shut it down. The Ottawa kind of storm that they brought tonight lasted a longer duration of time which ends up leading to that second goal which was then called back but it's even leads to what i've said 
And I broke it down in the last video against the Senators after we lost, and I talked about it in the preseason a little bit. Last-minute goals of a period should never happen. Never happen. If you're the team getting them, it's amazing for you. You should never be allowing them against, and this has been consecutively that the Leafs have allowed a last-minute goal. I get that it was called back. I get it. And I, it doesn't count, so whatever, you you take it and you move on. But 0.6 seconds left in the second period, you're up 2-1. That, get, that goal ties the game going into the third period. Now Ottawa's coming out with a whole lot more energy, a whole lot more intensity to start that third. And like this is a team where we've showed that we're quick to be dejected so you gotta just limit those things because even then i and again i get that it was called back but like that's a 2-2 game right there and yeah. that's a complete swing of things especially going into that third period so i'm a little bit more difficult to jump on it and say yeah this was being incredible or like really good and push it up to an a but like like you said jack campbell did play really well he had a 9.52 save percentage he only let in one goal and the team all around defensively held them to 21 shots like that's a pretty good night we do get to see goals yeah. from simmons a little depth kerfoot a guy who could end up on the second or third line here and then bunting gets his first as the leaf so that's a good feeling but we're still looking for more from our top guys from Tavares and Marner. Nylander, again, plays great. Campbell plays great. Our defense looked good. Lilligren stepped in and played pretty well. So it's like there's not too much to complain about, but it's more one of those games you just look at and it's like, meh, it happened and we won and that's good. We could take our two points, but let's move on. Yeah, you know, I was a little bit juiced up a bit more so about it just from the standpoint of, yeah, we're not – we're not relying on goals to bail us out or just star yeah. power up front to, to timely do it. Like we are, we, this was like a defense, which is completely fair. Start. Like, yeah. Yeah. So I, I felt good about that, but you're right. This is, this is Ottawa we're dealing with and we should have had a chip on our shoulder after losing to them the other night and just knowing where our aspirations are, where, where theirs are in, uh, in retrospect. So yeah, it's not, it's not the ideal result, but I'm still, I'm still going to stick by a minus. I, I was happy the Leafs got these uh, two points tonight. Fair enough. Well, that about wraps it up for this uh, this episode, breaking down the Leafs, beating the Ottawa Senators. 3-1 to one goals from Wayne Simmons, Alex Kerfoot, and Michael Bunting. Jack Campbell makes 20 saves, one goal against, finishes with a 9-5-2 save percentage. A great night from him. And it bounced back from the Leafs here as they go to 2-1 and one on the season. But if you haven't subscribed to this channel, make sure you do that. Right now, we are on the road to 1,000 subscribers. We are pushing there really quick, trying to get there as fast as we can. Goody and I have been absolutely hustling along, pumping out videos. So if you enjoy this content, if you like these breakdowns, if you're not subscribed yet, make sure you do that. Share this channel with your friends. Tell them to subscribe to this channel as well. And then Leafs fans, we will see you guys after the next game, Monday, October 18th at 7 p.m., playing finally playing a team from outside of Canada. It will be so amazing to get to see some content from outside of Canada, playing against the Toronto Maple Leafs, get to see guys like Artemi Panarin suit up for the Rangers, Capo Caco. So I'm looking forward to that one. Beliefs fans, we'll see you guys after that game, Monday, October 18th at 7 p.m. against the New York Rangers. Keep believing. Signing off. Thank <laughs> you.